This is the second video lecture from um, on discrete event simulation and the review of the uh, bank teller example. We got down to in the earlier lecture to function event. This uh, is a, a slam function that's in the uh, uh, library in dummy form and it's up to you to write it for each of your applications so of course it's not included in the uh, prototypes um, only in um, your user code. The function event is what's called a switch function it's actually the branching point and the point of communication between the awesome code uh, the awesome simulation executive and the code that you write or your code. So um, you'll need um, um, basically to write it in this form switch function event. The first part is the event code and the second part is a pointer to the entity where um, the information is stored about the entity that you're processing. Um, you'll do a switch statement based on the value of code which is an integer and then the value of code will be compared with each case value and when it's equal then that case will be executed so for example ARRIVL you remember we um, found to find that to be one so the event code one is the same as the arrival event so when we have an arrival event occur uh, switch function event is called by SLAM. The event code and the pointer to the attributes of the entity is stored, uh, is passed into the function. So well, you'll need one of these for each event code that's possible, um, followed by an actual call to your event function. So notice that uh, we use the full word, word arrival here, where we use kind of an abbreviation for the function name. Uh, this works fine, and uh, you sh these should not be the same. Otherwise, um, ARVL will get replaced by whatever you pound to find ARRIVL to be, for example. Um, you'll need one case statement for each event code, followed by a call to the event function, and the argument should be the uh, pointer to the entity that is uh, executing the event. Uh, we can also add a break statement or you should have a break statement at the end of the case so you break out of this switch function and return you don't execute the other options. We can also have a default case as is shown here and call um, a user defined error function. This will terminate the simulation. Of course you'd want to terminate termi 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 if you don't have uh, uh, a known event code. Okay, then you can break out of the function. Um, after this, we're finished with the uh, uh, standard SLAM functions that are provided in dummy form in the library that you have to rewrite uh, for your application. Next, we'll look at the uh, different um, um, event uh, routines. These routines uh, represent everything that uh, has to be processed in uh, each particular event. So for the arrival event as well as the um, in-service event, um, we have flowcharts of those in the second uh, lecture in the discrete event um, um, portion uh, on learn. So what we've done here is just uh, kind of write out uh, that uh, whatever was in that flowchart or pseudocode. Uh, first of all, we need a couple of local variables. Um, again, these are defined within the function. The function starts here with this brace and ends with this close brace. Um, you can always call your um, uh, uh, event routines void functions for their type. Give them a name and only one argument, the pointer to the entity that uh, you're working with. Um, we need a, another variable which is a type entity pointer to uh, be able to create a new arrival entity. And we also need, uh, this is kind of optional, where we find a double precision variable dtemp to store the uh, processing time. So first thing we do is schedule the next arrival. So we want to uh, uh, call this function su underscore ent clone. Um, and this will make a clone or copy 
of the entity that was passed in that's pointed to by PECUST. And um, so we can call this function, pass it the uh, entity pointer, and then it will return a new entity pointer, which is the next uh, arrival. Um, we can then use this new entity that we've created to schedule a new arrival using the pointer to that entity. And uh, it's a sample from the exponential distribution with a mean of 20. Okay. So we've scheduled the next arrival. Now we go back to the uh, one that just arrived, which is pointed to by PE cust. And we set attribute 1 equal to T now. So here's the uh, operator that uh, tells us to look at this pointer and look at the data item attrib1. And then we can set it to the current time. So this is just like using attrib1 in a, in a collect node. The next part is uh, what we do depending on whether the server is busy or idle. So if the status is idle, then we set the server to busy and schedule an end of service event, which is what's happening here. Otherwise, the clerk's busy, so we put it in this file one, which we created to hold all of the waiting customers. Um, so if status is equal to idle, don't forget this double equal sign. That's the logical comparison. Single equal is an assignment, so it causes this uh, value to be stored in this variable. In this case, we don't want to store anything anywhere. We just want to compare the two, so you need a double equal sign for the logical comparison. If it's true, we do the first uh, bracket or brace, set status to busy, Draw a sample from the uniform distribution. This is call to that function, get stored in dtemp, which we've defined up here. And then call schedule for an end of service event. Send it the customer pointer, pointer to the information about the current customer. And dtemp is the time interval from now to when this event is to occur. Otherwise, or else, if this uh, status is not idle, then the server's busy, so we want to put the server in a file. This is file one, so we call phylum, uh, file one, and send it the pointer to the customer information. Then we return back to uh, event, and then we will turn return back to the SLAM uh, processor. Let's take a look then at the last event, uh, end of service. Um, this represents what happens when the server finishes serving and the item is ready to depart. Need a couple of local variables again. You know, don't forget these don't exist un after the uh, control is returned from this function. So we need a new another pointer for uh, creating any new events or removing an event. Also, we need a double precision variable for storing processing time. So this will be used to store the uh, entity that we remove from file one uh, as we process future entities after the end of service. So um, first thing to do is to collect statistics on time in the system for each customer. So we uh, uh, calculate the difference between T now and PE cust is the pointer to the current customer is defined up here in the, the argument. So um, we subtract T now or rather attribute 1, which is the arrival time from T now. That gives us time in the system. And call collect to, call the, to collect the data. This is just like routing an entity to a collect node. Then we want to terminate the customer from the model. So we, there, here's the uh, function we use to terminate um, uh, an entity, send it its entity pointer. And then the, the entity is no longer anywhere in the system. Okay, the next thing we want to do is uh, if there's somebody waiting, which means uh, NNQ1 is going to be greater than zero, um, then we want to remove the first entry from the queue, uh, file one. So we use this local variable we define PE new to store the pointer to the item we remove. So remove means remove from file one the uh, top entity in the file. Okay, it returns an entity pointer which gets stored in PE new. So we've taken that uh, waiting customer out and then we schedule an end of service, put that item, uh, customer into service 
with uh, the pointer that we uh, obtained by removing the entity from the uh, um, file and a sample from the uniform distribution. So if there's somebody in the queue then we do everything from this brace down to this brace. Otherwise there's nothing to do, nobody to wait so the server gets set idle and control returns back to the event routine. So that summarizes the uh, overview uh, of uh, the code for this particular routine. Um, then we can um, essentially just run the model and uh, uh, we'll get uh, the appropriate results. Um, we also uh, have a, a, let's see, another option where we use the priority statement to define a file. So uh, to do that we'll switch to uh, this DEP, meaning uh, discrete event using the priority statement. And if I open up the control model, um, you'll find a, a priority statement for uh, file 1 right here, and it's ranked FIFO, which is the default ranking. This causes file 1 to be created and uh, set up with FIFO ranking. And we can use that in place of uh, the function that we used before in INTLC to set up the file. You can do it either way but don't do it both ways. Okay, sometimes it's easier just to put in the priority statement, especially if you have a uh, um, alternative ranking procedure. So um, let's open up this particular uh, user code. And if I scroll down to INTLC, you can see here for uh, the file function, I've commented it out, but uh, just left it in for your reference. So it's not executed but uh, the priority statement replaces this particular statement in the awesome model. Okay, that completes the overview. Um, we'll, uh, in subsequent lectures, we'll go over the material from the PowerPoint presentation.